as annoying as it may be for some, learning to use the terminal on Linux is crucial to use in the operating system well. Nowadays, a lot of things can be done through a graphical interface, but in some cases, it simply cannot be avoided. So here are six things you should absolutely avoid doing. Most often, when you install an application on Linux, it'll be done through a package manager on a Debian-based system that'll be apt, on Fedora, that'll be DNF, on Arch Linux, that'll be Pac-Man, or maybe you're using another system like a Flatpak or a Snap. Now, sometimes you'll be downloading directly from a Git repo, and I don't mean cloning the repo, I mean using an install script. And some of them recommend taking the install script downloading it through curl, and then piping it directly into a shell like bash, for example. This is done with zero validation, zero warnings. Whatever is downloaded from curl will instantly be run on your system. Now, obviously there are cases where the maintainer of the project is malicious and the install script is intended to ruin your system. In those cases, the project itself was malicious and you shouldn't have downloaded it in the first place. But most of the time, the developer isn't malicious, and the install script is completely safe. The issue is downloading over the internet isn't completely safe. What happens, for example, if your download cuts off in the middle of downloading the file, and maybe the last thing downloaded was something like rm-rf slash? Well that is going to start trying to delete everything on your system. That was not the intention of the developer, but a failed download caused it. To make sure this doesn't happen, just download the file completely, check the file, and then run the file. This is especially true if the file needs sudo bash. Never, under any circumstances, do curl into sudo bash. If you're doing that, just uninstall Linux now because you're accidentally going to do so in the future anyway. You've probably seen a shell variable, something like term, which indicates your default terminal, or path, which indicates where your applications are located. And just like in a programming language, shell variables are incredibly useful. When running a command that modifies data though, be incredibly careful about using them. You are not in a programming language. A shell variable is a lot closer to a macro than an actual variable. There isn't any checking done. So if a variable isn't set, it's going to be set to nothing. As an example, I do not have the variable var set. This prints out an empty string. So what if it was something like var and then slash star? Well, we get slash star, no mention of the var. So what if I was using that in an rm command? So rm-rf and then what I wrote before. Well, that turns into slash star, which is going to cause a lot of damage. When you are writing a shell script, it can be tempting to blindly use variables, but just like in a regular programming language, make sure you validate them before you use them. This is not just for the rm command, but for any destructive command, make sure you validate your variables. <laughs> Whilst a lot of things do have GUI config editors, a lot of the time you just configure an application using a file. And it doesn't matter if you modify the file using a GUI text editor or a terminal text editor, oftentimes you are modifying the file completely blind, hoping that you don't make a mistake. Yes, there is documentation, but the file itself doesn't tell you how to edit it. That's not always the case though. For certain things on your system, there are dedicated tooling that should be used to modify it. And when there is dedicated tooling, always use that tooling. It is there for a reason. Vice sudo for modifying your sudo config, userad, passwd, and usermod for modifying your user. 
grub mate config for generating your grub config. This tooling is there to make sure that you don't make a mistake. In the case of userad, passwd, and usermod, you're not even modifying a file directly. You are running the command and is doing all of that stuff in the background. In the case of vice sudo, it is going to syntax check what you've wrote and make sure you actually have a working sudo config. You don't want to be left with a broken sudo config. That's going to be a problem. In these cases, there is no need to reinvent the wheel. Just let the application automate it for you. You're going to be a lot better off. Just like with a programming language, when you're not sure how to do something in the terminal, it can be very tempting to go online and copy a pre-made solution. Oftentimes that solution is also going to be including pipes. And this is not inherently bad to do. But do pay attention to what you are copying. I highly recommend checking the manual for each of the commands you are running if you just have no idea what that command is. If you see a command and you're not sure if that is a destructive command or is not a destructive command, just check what it is doing, check the options that are being used, and understand what is actually happening. And as a very, very important general rule, if you see something like base64 or another encoding system followed by exargs, just check what it's actually using base64 for, because there are some cases where people think they are funny and inject things like rm-rf encoded in base64 just to see if someone is stupid enough to run it. Sometimes people are stupid enough to run it, just be careful. Exargs is used basically as a replacement command, so if there is something ejected into that base64, Exargs is going to run it. TLDR, unless you want to break your system, bare minimum, know the commands that are being run. Most Linux systems provide sudo as a means for a regular user account to run a command as root. And it can be very tempting to just stick sudo in front of every command, because that's going to make sure that everything just works well, right? You're just never going to have to worry about it. Well, this should be avoided, and sudo should only be used when it is absolutely necessary. There is this concept known as the principle of least privilege, where every action you take should be done with the least number of missions needed to make that action happen. So in the case of lsing your home directory, you don't need root access to list the files in your home directory. But if you're doing something like modifying your grub config, then yes, using sudo is the correct action. It is better the command fails and needed sudo than a command running that shouldn't have run because you gave it sudo. It's a minor inconvenience that will absolutely save you down the line. There will come a point where you try to run a command and didn't realize the extent of what it can do, and because you didn't give it sudo, it didn't destroy your system. Over the years, Terminal Apps have developed a general design concept and implicit guidelines, but there's not actually any rules about how a Terminal App should work and how the options should be laid out. You should never expect consistency between applications. Now, it is common to see certain things. For example, most terminals have a dash E option to launch the terminal instantly running a command. But sometimes you'll see options like dash capital V, which in some cases may be used to check the version, but in other cases might do something else completely random. If you want to know what an option is doing in your specific application, read the man page, or in some cases, it has help documentation. That's not even consistent. We don't even have consistent ways of showing documentation. There are common ways, but don't expect everything to do it. Like with the earlier ones, this is especially true for destructive commands. If the command modifies data, 
Don't just enter an option because another application had the same option. Check what that option does. I know this video is more of a beginner focused video, but I hope you still learned something anyway. So let me know your thoughts down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrub, Silly Parapay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and don't run the next command.